Hey everybody, Jimmy here. Welcome back to the channel. How many of you are eagerly awaiting the natural gas storage report that is set to come out tomorrow, one hour after the market opens? Now, when it comes to this report, what exactly are you expecting to happen? Are your expectations based on what you hope will happen, or do you have a solid resource that helps you with this? Would you like a little help? So you might be better equipped to take a trade once the report is released. Well, that's what I'm going to give you in this video, a resource that I found that provides valuable information regarding the natural gas report. This way you can better trade both UGAS and DGAS. So let's get into it. Did you know that 60% of you watching right now are not subscribed to the channel? I know, right? Take a second, hit that subscribe button and try us out. See what you think. So here's a screenshot right here of the natural gas storage numbers and expectations that I found online. I want to break these down for you. So let's take a second. Let's go over to this website. Let's look at these numbers and let's talk about what they mean and how they apply to the natural gas report that will be coming out tomorrow. Okay, I've got the website up that I found and this has been super useful. So I just wanted to share it with you guys. But this is investing.com and the link to this specific page, I'm going to drop in the comments below. So um, in the description below, sorry, and you can get a link to it there. But it's just really helpful and lays things out really nicely. And the first thing I want to start with is just looking at this graph that they put in. So we're talking about storage in billion cubic feet, which is BCF, which they use every Thursday, as we know, to present the numbers, whether we've climbed or fallen in terms of our storage. Now, if we look at this graph right here, anything above the line, it will show you that the actual was higher than forecasted. Now, if we go down below, any of the bars that are pushing downward are actually showing where the actual is less than what the forecasted is. So it's really helpful to just be able to quickly at a glance, whether it's one year, two years, or five years, you could look at any cluster. You can see whatever you want, and you can go date by date. So you can see that right here, We've got March 28th of 2019. We had a bar that was down, meaning that the actual was less than the forecasted, so we beat the estimate. If we flip to the upside, you can see the actual is greater than the forecasted. And in terms of storage, anytime that we have a forecasted amount and then the actual number comes in higher, we typically get a drop in the price in the intraday trading. And we're gonna look at that in just a second too because I picked a few of these dates and I went and looked at them and I took screenshots of the trading charts on the five minute time frame and I'm gonna show you how it reflects there. But looking right now, you can see all these up bars. So this is what I was talking about in yesterday's video about bazillions and bazillions of weeks in a row of storage just being greater than forecasted. So let's look at March 10th. 2019 actual 112 forecasted 105 so because there was an expectation set and because this is how our markets work there are expectations established when they aren't met no matter what they are if they aren't met you usually get a dramatic response in one direction or the other now moving away from this if I scroll down a little bit this is even handier I think in my opinion you can look at all the release dates for the reports that have come out and you can look at the actual, the forecast, and the previous. So we'll just look at what's happening tomorrow. So October 24th, 2019, at 1030 Eastern, which is one hour after the market opens, you can see there's a blank in the actual column. They're forecasting right here 87 billion cubic feet, and the previous was 104 billion, which you can see here. So it'll be interesting. So you, you know right now that 87 billion feet, billion cubic feet is the benchmark. That's what we have to beat. So tomorrow, the minute you see that natural gas report come out, you can say, okay, it's, it's, it's 86. So you know right away that we're probably going to get a jump in price. So you can start to make your decisions on how you want to trade you guys and DGAS based off that quick information. I hadn't seen the forecasts before, so this is new information for me. This may be old information for you. You may already know this and follow this week by week, but I just wanted to share it with you guys. I care about you. So looking at October 17th, the 10th, and the 3rd, what I did was take screenshots. So first, let's start with October 3rd, 2019. You can see that our actual was 112 billion cubic feet, and the forecast was for 105. 
So right now we know there was more than forecasted, so price probably dropped right away, right out of the gate at 8.30 my time, 10.30 Eastern time. So let's go to October 3rd, and I've got that screenshot right here. And I'm going to move myself over again. I keep getting in the way. So you can see that right here, this is the 8.30 candle right here. And this is the five minute chart. And the reason I use the five minute chart instead of the one minute chart is it wasn't letting me rewind far enough on the one minute chart in the thinkorswim platform. So I had to go to the five minute. But what you can decipher from these candles, these five minute candles is the minute that news came out that we had a higher than expected storage report for natural gas on the 3rd of October, you can see what happened immediately. We got a big plunge to the downside. So this was the low of the day. It was established after the report came out, and then you can see people bought it back up, and then we continued higher for the rest of the day. Now, I'm not focusing on why this happened, why we continued higher for the rest of the day, because that could be dependent upon the storage, which we know, demand, exports, imports, and weather. So five different things that could impact all of these prices and movements. So this could have been related to something else, but we know that the storage caused a push down immediately with a rebound, okay? So we're talking about just one piece of the puzzle and a resource to help you get a better grasp or to know what that piece of the puzzle is prior to the report. So from there, let's pop back over to the website again, and you can see now, let's go ahead, let's bump up to October 10th right here. So you can see we had 98 billion cubic feet was the actual measurement that came out. And for the forecast, we had 97 billion. So we know right now that the actual was just higher than forecasted. So we would expect another bump to the downside immediately. Whether or not it continued to the downside, we don't know. But that first minute is likely going to be, or a couple minutes, is going to be the downside, we think. So let's go over to the 10th and let's see what that screenshot looks like. And you can see right here on this one that we sure enough at 8.30 we got a big push down, not big, I guess you'd say maybe a moderate push down with an immediate rebound, some chop, and then we continued to sell off for the rest of the day. Now I don't know why it continued to sell off for the rest of the day, like I said that could have been part of the other four other factors going on, but the fifth being storage, we know that factor and we know that the increased number that was actual, when it was compared to the expected, which was less, there was a gain overall, we got that spike down right here. And that's the whole reason for that tail. Once it rebounded, then it could be up to other factors. But what we know right out of the gate is that that spike down was due to the storage increase. Now, let's back over to the chart. One more. Don't, I don't want to lose you yet. On October 17th, we had an actual of 104 billion cubic feet but the forecast was for 106 billion. So in this case, they actually code it as green, which means we're probably gonna see a, a pop in UGAS, an increase in price. So let's go to forward slash NG for the 17th, and let's go ahead and take a look here. So on this screenshot, the interesting thing is, here's the 835 minute candle, and sure enough, that report came out, we saw that we had less storage than expected, and boom, big pop to the upside. Now, right after those first few minutes, it pulled right back down and created this crazy bearish doji. We chopped for a minute and then we dropped. So we're seeing drops, climbs, we're seeing movement all over the board based on the other factors. But consistently from what I'm seeing from looking at this website and using this resource is those first few minutes are based specifically on what happens in the report. So right here, you can go through, and so tomorrow, we're forecasted to have 87 billion. The minute that report comes out and you see that number, you know what's gonna happen likely in those first couple minutes. Now again, don't take trades based on what I'm specifically telling you, on my opinions. You do your own due diligence, but use this table, use this graph as additional information to help aid your trades. So real quick, take two seconds and comment below. Tell me yes, I've seen this report before, I've seen this, this graph and this schematic before, or no, I've never seen it before and I didn't know about this website. Let me know in the comments, yes or no, and I wanna know how many of you knew about this website and this graph and this table because it's super helpful for me and I just wanted to share it with you.